what's going on guys this is stg on today's episode we have somewhat of a mystery so let me explain so i recently went into the city and i went to the world famous stax bowers gallery guys as you can see here i don't want to show too much personal information and i basically went there to look at their uh, showroom when you walk in and they have a few coins listed there. Years ago, they were at another location, guys, and uh, they used to have tons and tons of coins. Used to have drawers filled with any, almost any type of coin you could think of. And unfortunately, they don't have that anymore, it seems that they mostly have uh, transformed into the online model for the most part. But in their showroom, they do have a number of coins displayed. They're always getting coins and bars, as you uh, guys know. Bullion Baby and I went there and he picked up the vintage uh, Ingo Hard 1 ounce bar, I believe was from approximately 1969, and he paid about $25 for that, which I thought was pretty cool. I also picked up the uh, one ounce uh, prospector round, I believe from 1983, which I gave away as part of my first gall. And uh, JK Pioneer actually won that, so I hope he's enjoying that. Um, but, anyways, uh, I basically looked in their display. There's actually a guy I was talking to, and he had a number of US uh, bills that he was trying to sell. Uh, stacks at the time and they looked pretty cool uh, one of them was a hundred dollar bill he paid about thirty eight hundred dollars for um, unfortunately he had a number of bills and uh, stacks wasn't really paying uh, too well stacks isn't always the greatest place to sell your items uh, unless you might want to auction off the item you might do fare better but just for a straight uh, payout uh, they do not always give the uh, best prices. I'm just going to put it out there uh, compared to the stuff that I've sold in the past. So I basically looked in their display. They had a bunch of um, foreign silver coins. Mostly uh, they had Britannias. They had Maples. And I happened to notice this one coin in the corner, and it happened to be none other than a kookaburra from Australia. So I asked the guy how much, and the guy said 30 bucks. So I figured, okay, not bad, not bad. So I got the sales receipt here, guys. Again, I don't want to show too much personal information. It's marked as 30 with tax and everything else came out to 32.66 and I figured for that price why not I recently acquired another kookaburra from I believe it was 2016 and I paid approximately the same thing so guys without further ado this is the 1992 Australian kookaburra now, this coin might look like your average kookaburra, but there is a mystery involved with this. I'm hoping some of my Australian viewers or other viewers can help me out with this. So guys, check it out. As you notice here, it has a privy mark. Now this privy mark, I looked it up, and allegedly this is a quote-unquote American ego privy mark. Now, in 1992, they minted approximately 750 of these coins with this uh, quote-unquote privy mark. Now, you guys can uh, look up in your Renix catalog. That's right, I know about Renix. Uh, they don't always provide you <laughs> with the most accurate information, but I've got this from multiple uh, sources that uh, only 750 of these particular coins maximum mintage was 750 of these produced that means there could be less than that produced guys so i thought it was kind of a neat coin but i had but this this isn't the mystery so let me explain so guys if you actually look at the uh 
1993 design of the kookaburra you actually notice that this design and the 1993 design are the same so i've noticed that coins with this uh quote unquote american eagle privy mark basically show uh this design of the following year's uncirculated kookaburra coin now i've also noticed that on some other uncirculated uh kookaburras without this privy mark so guys uh if anyone out there knows uh why on the australian proof kookaburras from this error did they actually list show the design for next year's uncirculated coin if anyone knows the answer to this please let me know i am extremely curious uh, it seems that during the 90s that they did this practice where they basically would issue next year's uncirculated kookaburro design on the prior year's proof coin. So it is a bit of a mystery to me. If someone knows the answer to this, I would be uh, highly grateful to know why. And I just am starting to collect these kookaburras. As you guys know, I love my gold kookaburras, and I've also been collecting the 1 10th ounce gold and platinum kookaburras. Again, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing the name. I am not a native Australian. <laughs> You'll have to forgive this American bloke here, or mate, as you guys say. Um, and... Uh, it's just a really nice design, guys. I'm very fortunate to have spotted this. Honestly, when I first bought it, I saw the, the privy mark, but I really didn't think anything of it until I did further research and found out that this year there was only a maximum of 750 of these coins minted. My assumption would be that the uh, Amer quote-unquote American Eagle is basically... Uh, specifically designed for export to the American market. I don't know if that was the case. The fact that they produced so little of these coins at that time really intrigues me. So guys, if anyone has any definitive information not from Renix, please let me know. And uh, thank you. I appreciate everyone in Australia and everyone around the world. Who watches my channel for the support for your comments for your feedback and suggestions please if you haven't done so already subscribe to my channel like and as always stack that gold